Okay. Good morning. Welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and we take things that we get for free or things that we're going to throw out, and we turn them into home decor to sell or use in our house. And today we are working on what we call back porch offerings. These have actually been on the back porch so long at the at the shop that I have no idea. Maybe they came from Joanne. She's she drops off lots of good stuff, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I think I remember both of these when we cleaned up this uh, this fall. So it's been that well last fall, I guess. That's been that long um, since we've addressed the situation. <laughs> but this one's got uh, fleur de lis all over it. It's wrought iron. I am going to be doing a... Not to be confused with rod iron, because that's how I always spell it, rod iron. <laughs> well, it is kind of like a rod, so, you know, I guess that works. Um, and it's not, not cast iron, but I'm going to be doing a rust-style patina. I think I've got it pretty dialed in with the making powders from DIY and some Carnival Red. And then uh, Jamie's going to be painting this one. This one's wood. So we'll see how far we get. If you guys are channel members on YouTube or JRV subscribers on Facebook, we just did a two-part series over the last couple of weeks where we showed you how to do rust patina. And Zeb's going to show you the clocks that we worked on. Um, we kind of like to use our private group as places to try out new techniques in real time. It usually takes us about two hours to complete a project. So we just do it over a couple of weeks. Um, and Zeb did some rust, and I think it turned out awesome. So this, this is, is his clock. This is a, one of our thrifted clocks we did a while back. It was just yellow oak before. Yeah. Um, and this is this is what we ended up with here with the rust. And, so, you know, I went pretty drippy with it because initially when I was playing with the rust, I really kind of, I was trying to get it to run with the water. And so it got real drippy and, and but it was fun. And then I'll show you Jamie's project. She went a different direction because she had a lot more detail on I her I went clock. cottage. French country. Are you surprised? Zeb has, Zeb has a boho heart. So we'll get these listed. We'll get these listed on the website later today. I just, I just like blues and greens together. So mine, it's hard to tell probably on camera, but there is um, some lighter blue under the green. There's some white. I use dark wax. And then also I use the making powder mixed with liquid patina and made a mustard color um, that's peeking through. So, so, you, so you can use the making powders mixed with liquid patina and make your own paint. So that's what we're going to be playing around with today. I think I've got it dialed in enough. I did enough practicing mm -hmm. on the channel membership videos that I can, uh, I can duplicate it and show you guys how and kind of give you some ratios. And I'm just going to wipe this down because, like I said, mine has lived on the back porch for a long time. Zeb's has too, but it's not quite as dirty. Oh, this has got white paint. Oh, there's a spider. You're, you're, you're giving it like a little bit of like a wash. What? You're giving it a wash while I'm washing with paint. The sun um, was catching your hair. There was a spider. The sun was catching your hair ah, and I thought that, it was. That, I need you. It's, it doesn't look like a terribly dangerous one, but that one. What was that reel we were watching last night? There was night? a reel that was like, how can women take hot wax, throw it on their leg, rip out the hair by the follicle, but yet they're afraid of a spider? Like, I don't make the rules. I don't know. Okay. Sorry. This is going to look kind of white afterwards. Just trying to it's get the, okay. Give it a good wipe down. I was doing, I finished up the thrift haul stuff from Saturday today and it was all white. Did all I right. just... I'm going to angle the camera down so you can kind of see my formula on my rust here. Let's, I need a clean one. All right. Work. I'm going to show you this right here. Okay. So I'm starting out with uh, the liquid patina that's clear and we just, we just need little amounts of this. Actually, I probably should paint it so that this doesn't dry out first, but I want to show you right off the bat what we're doing. So this is just a little Spiders add texture. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be adding that kind of texture. Spiders add texture. No spiders, okay. no spider eggs. That's what happens when things live All outside. Right. Next, I've got the, uh, the making powder Van Gogh. Okay. I'm just going to tap a little bit, a little bit. That's, that's actually a lot. A little goes a long way. I got more than I needed. Um, and then carnival red is my next ingredient. And I kind of just spread them out here so that I can add them as needed and get different tone variations and things. Can I bring a new 
look with patina? Um, it was white swan. Are you talking about this? Oh, is this all <laughs> the patina we have? Um, maybe. There's a bunch of uh, big top in there. Okay, mm -hmm. and then this is the pool party, which is like a turquoisey blue green. Oh no! Oh no! Maybe scoop yours out with a spoon. Hold on. Hold, please. <laughs> I'm over here digging through paint, and all I hear is, "Oh no!" That's why oh, you no. put it. That's why you put it in a separate pile, folks. Gonna, oh jeez. We're gonna save like that much of it, and see if I can scoop this back in. All right. I was gonna maybe mix some making powder up, but I think I'm just going to go with paint. Because if I seem... seem a little hazy and uh, lethargic this morning, it's because I am. I was, uh, you know, we we did the yard video yesterday and my hay fever's kicking up. And so I've been really sneezy and kind of kind of nasally. But also, I was in the ER with Jamie's dad last night until, oh, was, got to bed about 4.20 this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's, Normally I go he's like got an infection in his toe probably started out as an ingrown toe and needed to get him on an antibiotic quick because he's diabetic and 88 and he couldn't even feel that his toe was infected because his feet are so numb right now. So, well, uh, normally I would go, but I didn't know that he was going to need to go. And I took a Benadryl and a, for my allergies along with a time released melatonin. And so um, I was like, yeah, I can't drive. You're going to have to catch this one. Last year, I think I made every single ER trip in the middle of the night with my mom. I think there's like eight. Yeah. Knock on He's wood, okay. this is the they first got one. Him a, they got him a good antibiotic going. They, they gave it to him through an IV so that it would work really fast. Yeah, I just checked him. It looks good. Yeah, it's it's looking a lot better this morning. But we can't. We didn't want to let it go all night and wake up this morning and have it be – because it was already starting to run up his foot. We didn't want to lose a foot. Nope. Can't mess around with diabetics. Who was like my toe? I'd probably just put some tea tree oil on it. But anyway, so that's why I'm a little little hazy. We were we were dealing with that. So now, so all right. So I got. I slept like a log. I don't even think I realized what was going on last night when Zeb was like, "I think your dad needs to go to the ER." I was like, "Okay, well, can you take him?" <laughs> <laughs> so we got the Van Gogh and the pool party mixed up to kind of like this. Uh, I don't want to say like pukey color, but that's that's the best description. And now I'm just that working in definitely is pukey. some carnival red. And you could leave it like this. Rust comes in all kinds of different tones and colors. I'm just going to get it a little more red. If you were watching yesterday in the channel membership slash uh, subscriber, because we also have subscribers on Facebook now too that join us in that group, you saw me do a similar situation. But I think... We really got it dialed in here. Well, I'm doing a very boring base coat compared to Zeb of cake batter. So you guys can see that here in a minute. So you can see how, how little I used of all of these. I've still got quite a bit of powder there that I might scrape back out and put back in the jar. It goes a long way and probably spoon it out. Yesterday, I did not have the blow up there, but you want to go for like this reddish brown color. So I've got those, those, uh, four ingredients mixed in together there. And now I'm gonna paint a base on my thing. I'll bring you up so that we can see what Jamie's doing now. All right, what are you painting that, Jamie? Cake batter, hold on, I've gotta oh. text Mariah. Is Mariah having a? No. Mariah's monitoring this morning. She swaps with Caitlin so that Caitlin can have mornings or Saturdays off. off when she needs to for various things. Yeah, don't ever play with diabetes on the feet. Yeah, and actually nope. my uh, son is a CNA at a nursing home part-time, and he's full-time. He works for a trash company. Yeah, he's working like 80 hours a week. He just got this other And job. he texted me. He's like, how's dad? Is he, Or how's grandpa? Is he going to lose a foot? I'm like, no, he's fine. Well, I sent him a picture last night. And oh, me, that's why. Why didn't he text you then? Maybe... I thought he was working. I didn't know he had the day off, so I thought he was working the night shift. So I just sent him a picture. I'm like, this is my evening. How's yours oh. going? <laughs> so when he got up this morning, he texted me because yeah. you were sleeping. Got it. Yeah. All right. So I think I'm going to do a mixture because turquoise and greens and blues go real well with this rust color. You kind of saw on that. It really made it pop out, and you could see it 
almost gave it not a not quite a copper look, right? It wasn't that tur that's that's way too turquoisey. The verdigris on that wasn't what I was going for. I just wanted it to look rusty. Oh, I need another. All right. I need another plate. I got to squeeze out this. This first is a pain in, first in the out. butt to brush, just in case anybody was wondering. This is where a paint sprayer would be handy, but then how would that be helpful on live TV? I don't I know. We we, we did me. spray once on live and people were like amazed at how fast it went but it's not something we do very often. i mean we could once we get over at the shop absolutely the we'll or yeah the church will have enough room to really set up and i think we could do a live spray a live the spray. last time we did as opposed it, to it a was dead spray. outside yeah oh i got a boogie in my first in first out i'm gonna need more paint than that bottle um Anyway, we, we sprayed outside in our driveway the last time we did it, and it was windy, and the yeah, it was like blowing really in the mics. <laughs> We've also spray painted in our house, our very first video we ever put up on YouTube. That was not my finest hour. I think we're going to do a react video to that. <laughs> because it's to our first funny. YouTube video? Oh, I got it out, maybe. This is what happens when you let them sit in your garage where it's hot. I don't know why I picked cake batter. It uh, it's so cute, but like yellows have the least coverage of any paint color. And when you have something that's like super annoying to paint inside, use a color that covers well. Don't be like me. Now I got fingerprints in here. The struggle is well, I'm going to get some texture on this. Boy, this is going to be fun on this iron. Holy moly. Luckily, it's got a good brown base. So I might be able to work with that and really work with the rustiness. Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm. I'm gonna probably put another coat, like color, over the top of this. It's cute, but what this was. This is the right also choice. a good spray candidate here. Yeah, but that's not a lot of surface area. No, I'm. I'm just going real crazy fast with the but brush. But getting you, I usually get inside before I get outside. So well, well, you know, I'm, I like to do things the hard way sometimes. Well, I'm not saying you have to. You know? <laughs> just saying. This is the worst paint job I've ever done. Poor Zeb and the paint <laughs> struggle is real. Um, says we need a line of JRV Zeb power tools. Can you get on that spare time? Oh. I don't know about that. that. Somebody else would have to manufacture it. And then we could just put our name on it. Kind of like the paint that we're coming out with with DIY. We're not manufacturing it. Ain't nobody got time for that. I love the Milwaukee tools so picking much. The colors. Like I probably would have a hard time. I'd just be like, yeah, I'm gonna just just use these. Because they're they've already got the all the, the tools and the formula. I could probably compile a list of my favorites, like my my have to haves. So thanks for the cake batter info. There's nothing wrong with cake batter, I should just say, but like when you're covering something dark like this tote, just know it's probably gonna take like three coats. So don't use it if you're worried about that, or if you gotta like cover a bunch of. Well, and you area. have a lot of little areas yeah. and rungs and stuff that are all going different directions on the. I was not nearly on the brush strokes. Look I mean, how good that is. Just, I love the mermaid tail color. I like blues. I have some. I have some. Uh, I don't even know. I want to say is that Monet's garden. I think that's Monet's garden. I don't know the green next to it. I may come in and, yes, that's and work garden. some white in there and do like a sagey over the top of this. We'll see if time allows for that because we got to get our rust on here too. I'm going to forget the inside while we're live and just work on the edges <laughs> and I'll deal with that. Well, I'm not, I don't, so people don't have to watch me struggle for the next 30 minutes, paint the inside of a tote. Just know that it will get painted eventually. It wouldn't be so bad, but it's a magazine rack. So it has these two things like right in the middle and it's stupid. It's irritating me this morning. So you can see, see me here on something like this. Jamie's probably will have to address brush strokes, but on this metal, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Once I get full coverage, it's going to be fine. And you're not even going to really notice. I don't think I'm going to address brush strokes. I don't think that's happening today. All right. I'm just going to go with it. The whole top's coming off. Let's see if it's got it's going a, topless. Well, look at that. Look how crusted that is. We have a video on the, the tools we use, but I think did we do that for channel members. And it's been a long time too. And I didn't like, 
We have a video I think, it I think was an for edited channel one members. somewhere, but I also think we did one for channel members. It's not something to be honest. When we made it, nobody watched it, so it's probably not something we're gonna make again. I mean, I can just Maybe tell a you. Blog post. I can just tell you right now, um, a good impact drill, and then a regular drill for countersinking and and uh, working with like Forstner bits, um, a drill bit set, um, some countersinks, um, drill bits, and also the Forstner bits are really good for most woodworking applications. Um, I would get after that. I would probably get the jigsaw. The I love the Milwaukee one. It's it's really heavy and doesn't jump around on you. You need a nail gun, you need a jigsaw, and you need are, a circular saw, yeah. and you should get a drill. And these are all there you go. cordless. Oh, and an but you orbital get sander. Yeah, an orbital sander. There's your basics. Random orbital. <laughs> Zeb, Zeb will talk about it for half an hour. That's why I'm... I could, and I got my uh, I got my monotone tired Clear voice going. <laughs> so we don't, we don't want to get too far into tool time with... Uh, with Zeb. With Zeb, yeah. So I'm mixing up some Moody Blue milk paint. I'm not really sure why I should have just picked like old school by DIY. I would go thick on that too. Well, unfortunately. Did you add too much water already? I already <laughs> added too much water and I just had a sample of paint. So pass me that color. So I've got moody blue in here. It looks like this. This color. is curry, which is real similar to cake batter. I'm going to make some green apparently because I didn't put, I don't have any more moody blue. So I'm going to add some curry. Curry is like a mustard color, but more like it's not as golden as Van Gogh. Yeah, it's more muted more than Van Gogh. Pastel. Add some curry in here to thicken her up. Just like cooking. I'm going to add some curry paste. We've been cooking more. We've had too many groceries and I was like, we are not eating out this week, no matter what. And so we've been like finding well, interesting things to well, do. I feel with... like between you and your mom, there wasn't a lot of communication around Easter time on what foods to get. And she kept going out with Odilia I think there was like three Costco trips. We and, kept forgetting things. Yeah. And every time you'd see something else that, you know, Costco is real good at marketing. So you're like, oh, that looks tasty, even yeah. though we don't need it. <laughs> and we have an excess, like the fridge is super full and the pantry is super full. So we need to eat it down so we don't waste it. All right. I'm stirring in my curry here. All right. So this is what it looks like with curry. Can you guys see that? Boy, I might need a smaller brush to get down in here. I'm sure I'll hey, miss. Debbie. Hello. It's morning right. time. I got cake Utah. batter on here and it's almost dry. I need to get a heat gun. I feel like I want to do a second coat of cake batter though to really give it a good solid coat and then I'll paint something else on the inside. I didn't even know what I was going to say about morning time. I had something I was going to say, and then I was like, oh, yeah, well, painting this, painting this mermaid tail. <laughs> the, the thing with Zeb is that he doesn't drink caffeine. So if so he's I will continue late night, to, there's no there's I will no continue to be that. tired till I get a little nap. I got some wood turning I have to get done today. I've got some orders on the website. Debbie, I didn't get your text. I'll have to check it after the live. It probably came in after we started at 10. All right, I'm just going to heat gun this cake batter and give it a second coat. We'll get pretty close to full coverage with our second coat. Yeah, I've been trying to think of what I was going to say, and I can't remember. Zeb is using mermaid tail, Tracy, and I'm using cake batter. And I'm about to mix in some milk paint over the top. My mermaid tail is going to get toned back. I don't think I'm going to leave it this bright. Because it's it's pretty intense. Debbie sent me an audio message. Debbie, if you want me to hear your message, you gotta text it because I'm live. <laughs> Debbie and the audio messages. I love them. You really get the inflection of what she means. All 
All right. I'm going to. I'm hoping it's something exciting about the new cottage colors. Yeah, I'm sure that that's what it is. This is where this Klingon brush is really going to shine because I'm just going to jab at it and it's, it holds enough paint. We should be good to go on these inside. All right, there's two coats of cake batter. That is much better coverage on two coats. But for full coverage, you'd probably need a solid three. Oh, we did put on through. the website <laughs> yesterday, I don't know if there's any left, but we put the DIY lab paint on, which is the Oops paint. It's $9.95 for eight ounces, which is a really good deal. So if you haven't snagged any of the lab paint, better get it while you can, because I didn't even like, I made one little post in the January Vintage Group, did not promote it other than that. And we have been below and through it. And it, once it's gone, it's gone because it's like oops paint. Okay, I'm going to dry this now. Oh, Debbie says that they're launching my new paint line for pre-order today for oh. retailers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a secret, but she didn't say it's a secret. So I feel like if it's happening today, it's only a secret for a few Yeah. Few so that means hours. retailers will be able to pre-order it and then we'll get a date for release to the public here pretty soon. That's very exciting. It is very exciting. We've been getting this going since what, about November? Well, we were talking about We've it. We've been talking about it since before that. Oh, see, I told you I was going to miss some spots on here. Look at that. I may have to come back through afterwards, but I, I feel like just slapping it on here, that's pretty good coverage. I might just do like a white something or other wash, maybe mix it with this green here so I get kind of a sage color. Earthy, earthy greens are in, guys. I did a whole segment in business coaching on greens yesterday. <laughs> in style yeah we're super excited we're coming out with five colors uh we've already shown a lot of them but they're I, i'm gonna just come out and say it so i don't know if i'm not allowed to but oh well um there's gonna be a bright white we're gonna have a pink but not your typical pink it's like a vintagey pink so it's really good um and there's gonna be obviously blue and mint and gray and if you've been watching our videos you've seen us sneak peek out all of those colors um except for the pink, because that one gave us the most trouble. So that one will be a complete surprise um, to you guys because I have not used that on camera. It might be one of the best colors too. It's, it's really good. Look at this, I'm, I'm going in sideways. Thank you, Debbie. She said she wanted me to tell my peeps. Are, are these my peeps on here? Right now my peeps are, our, we have 11 Americanas that are getting a new cardboard box today in the garage. They've outgrown their other one. Our They're literally jumping out of it and running they are around so big. all willy nilly in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome new member, Karen Mofford. Is this my cousin, Karen? Um, if you are a channel member, uh, be sure to check out the community tab on YouTube. That's where you get the links to the extra videos. And then if you sign up to be a JRV subscriber to the private group, the links are just in the JRV subscribers private group that you get added to once you join. All right. I'm not going to worry too much about the inside. Um, I think I'm going to give it a couple more and then we're going to move on to the next color. All right. So I'm painting that moody blue that was mixed with curry over the top of this. And I'm not washing my brush because hashtag I'm lazy. <laughs> Debbie says the colors are so pretty. They are. I'm excited to use them and try out some new techniques. They have the new paint line has a built in sealer, which is kind of different. So I've been practicing on how to get different finishes with the built in sealer because that's a different uh procedure than how we currently do it i'll flip i'll flip this around so you guys can see it in a minute it's moody blue and curry in case you're wondering but um anyways i've been doing a lot of dark and decrepit like a glaze with it and because it has a built-in sealer you can wipe it back pretty easy and then i dry brush on the base color over the dark and decrepit and i'm beginning a really good look and the good news is once you like the look you're done because it's already sealed okay so that's that. Don't worry, the yellow is coming back.
I decided to just paint one side on the inside and I'll finish the other side off camera. That way we can get to some of the, if you, if some of the other details I want to do. If you're just joining, I made a rust patina at the beginning of the video. So once it's no longer live, you can go back and catch that if you kind of want my formula on it. Yes, Heather, you can get the paint from us or any DIY retailer. So we'll get that ordered. I don't want to create a frenzy, but I know they will only have a limited amount available right away. So if you miss the first run of paint, it's okay. Be patient. They'll make more. But we do want to sell as much paint as possible because we want the warehouse to know, the manufacturer, that we want more colors. So if we do well, yeah, we, then... we had about 12 colors we wanted to go with and we got five. And we want, we're going to start out with pints. So in order to get different sizes or different colors, we've got to, we've got to sell well. Which is smart on the manufacturer's yeah. end. They, they want to make sure it's going to be something viable before they sink a big investment in on it. Well, also the thing about coming out with five colors is they can focus on those five colors and not spread themselves too thin when the reaction is you know, popular, which generally happens with anything that DIY releases. It's always very popular. I am going to paint the middle the same color, but I'm trying to get the sides done because I'm probably going to stencil them and it's going to be way more exciting than watch me paint the inside of a crate. So I'm just going to do the edges. That way I can finish it, stencil it, wax it. All right. <clears throat> All of the colors that come out will be very cottagey, so that will be good. They'll be all my favorite things. Now, be careful if you do what I'm doing right now and you heat gun milk paint. Even with the DIY, the milk paint can get pretty chippy. But this piece was pretty dry to start off with, so I don't think it'll be a problem. I wanted more of like a sagey type green. I probably should add some yellow to this, too. I'm just so lightening up. This? I'm lightening up my, I think this is Monet's garden. I don't know what was in that first out, first thing, first out bottle. That's Monet's garden. Yeah, Monet's garden and white swan mix so that I get more of a light sage. And then I'm going to come back and just hit the highlights. I'm going to dry brush all these floor de leaves on my, my raw iron piece here. I did discover if you get a little bit of um, glue underneath the new colors, you can get some crackle. So I'm also going to play with that with the new paint. You know I love crackle. I'm getting crackle right now because I'm heat gunning this milk paint. So if you're just joining us, this is kind of the rust situation I've worked out earlier. Because that's the title of the, uh, the video, DIY rust on these free back porch pieces. He's doing DIY rust and I'm doing same old, same old. Okay, so I, I wiped off most of the paint off here. You can kind of see the crackle on there, even as far away as the camera is. So again, mine is Moody Blue mixed with just a little bit of curry. I, had, I was just going to do straight up Moody Blue, but the paint was too thin. So I just threw in some curry. Yes, Brayden, Debbie texted me that my new paint is going to be on pre-order for the retailers. That's what the text was. The nice thing is a lot of people just want a paint that they could just paint and be done, especially with thrift lips, and they don't want to have to waste time sealing it or whatever. So this is going to be really good for that. I'm going to stop heat getting that because that's starting to chip. All right. Okay. The trolls are out today. Ew. Yeah. Somebody Mariah just... having to do some work. <laughs> Mariah's putting people in timeout left and right. Peeps got to get something better to do with their time. Well, we've had a couple of big videos on Facebook. 
and it's driving a lot of new and maybe also not so exciting people. We've got a lot of fun people though that this is on YouTube that have been fun to interact with. Yeah, oh, Leslie, fun. we don't have an official release date, so we'll get the release and the launch going here pretty quickly. All right, so you guys saw how I just kind of slapped that on there. That's that's that all the harder that two tone is slapping. right there. And I, I haven't dipped my brush again. I got way way more paint than I needed. Just really picking. I might need to do a little bit more. A little extra dip. Get the get it dry again. I'm gonna dig through my. You guys might hear stuff rustling around. I'm digging through my stencil situation. I did organize my stencils so they are much easier to find. Okay, I think that's that's going to be good enough to get us to our next step. Like I said, I'll finish the inside off camera, probably. I, it's just a pain to paint. I've been poking it through the hole and painting it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use, uh, are you surprised, a French grain sack stencil? So this is a big one. So we have our mini set, and this is like a big one. And I love the big ones for branding larger pieces. And I, I was going to initially do a dark gray because I went so dark with this blue. I think I'm going to do white. You have white, yeah? White yep, swan? white swan's right there. Okay, is this stencil brush not used? Can I use it? Yeah, go ahead. I just had it out in case we needed it. So I've dried my paint on the ends. Again, if you're just tuning in, the inside will get painted. But, and the nice thing is the yellow, like the cake batter underneath this color of blue is a good sub. Can you fix the screen? Oh, yeah. Um, it crackles and looks so good underneath. If you guys are wanting the paint and products you're seeing us use today, Mariah is dropping links, or you can go to jamierayvintage.com. Do you want me to bring close? Oh, that one. I'm not really doing anything fancy on mine. I'm going to heat gun mine. I so. got to heat gun this stencil because it's pulling up. Oh. There we go. Give you guys a good shot of the... Uh, so if you ever have a stencil with dishes. a little part that's kind of poking up, um, these are really, really thick. Just hit it with a heat gun, just quick. Don't melt it. And then you can poke it back down. Or you can also put a um, cloth over it and then iron it. But be careful not to melt the stencil. These stencils, the Jamie Ray Vintage stencils are super thick, so they can hold up to that. And then occasionally something like this six right here will pop up. All right, I think I'm just going to do... Oh... I wish, I guess we'll just do this first. I think I'm just going to do Oh, that's like my favorite the, stencil. I know you use it all. I thought you liked the wheat one the best. I do like the wheat one too, but that's, I mean, that's got a crest on it. It's pretty great. Okay, so when you're stenciling, you want a dry, you want a very dry brush. If you have problems with leaking underneath, it's not dry enough. And I'm just going to do the Melissa Morrow swirl method. So that way I don't make any cats think there's somebody knocking at the door. We used to pounce and then we would have people say that their animals thought there was somebody at the door and they'd start barking. The swirling is much quieter. I only pounce now if it's like a very small stencil and I really need to get into the detail and I can't. I'm using the half inch stencil brush. It's probably one of the more versatile sizes because it's not too big and not too small. I actually wound up using the one inch stencil brush more to wax than to stencil. Jamie, what is my store address? So the current store address we're moving in a couple months. Hopefully soon. Hopefully. It, the current address is 338, no, sorry, um, 1245 West Main <laughs> Street. Sorry, I got too many addresses on the brain. 1245 West Main Street in Lehigh. And then the new address is what, 1150? 1190 North 500 West. 1190 North 500 West. It's the address on the church. The church that we're moving our store to. So we will get a sign out soon at the church. Now, fair warning: soon. if you stop by, it's a construction zone. I'm, I'm not going to give you a tour. Yeah, we actually <laughs> it, is, it is really blown up. There's not even stairs to the upstairs it's right just, now. It's not safe. It's a construction zone. Plus, we're usually in the middle of working, and we don't have enough time to even get our work done. So. But you can, you know, you can drive by. You can and drive by, pee. get familiar with the area. But it's literally like around the corner. It's easy to find. The it's shop. on the National Historic Registry. Yeah. 
if you look up the North Branch Meeting House, it will the the history will pop up. Oh, Dana's using the Harlequin stencil today. I haven't used it. It's not really in my jam, but I know it's super popular. So I created it. Not every stencil is definitely something in my style. Like I have mermaid stencils and things like that. And I'm not really a beachy person. We have so many retailers. I try to create a variety of Listen, things. Listen, the bulk of the population lives on the east or the west coast. That is true. Or along the gulf <laughs> or they just love mermaids which is awesome. that's true you could live in kansas and be real into mermaids i was not super diligent about offloading so we'll see what this looks like oh that turned out good all right so you guys can see it the right way oh and you did get some big crackle on that that's like because i heat gunned it that's like big thick been painted 20 times crackle yeah it turned out good all right i'm gonna sorry if you didn't see that the germs right. will be long gone before somebody buys it i'm going to do the other side i'm going to heat gun this so it doesn't smear and then i'll flip over and do the other side the other nice thing about the new paint line because of the built-in sealer it's going to make stenciling a dream we have done some stenciling with it and it's it's really good it's a little i don't want to say a learning curve it's just different than the diy paint so you got to it's almost like um, with the milk paint, you got to really, really have the offload situation done. Our current store is open Tuesday through um, Tuesday through Saturday, Friday, 10 to 6. We just increased our hours to get ready for the move. And then Saturday, 10 to 4. And Jenny is working. And we have, who's the new gal? Is it Maria? Maria. We have a new gal starting this week. Her name is Maria. So you see Jenny or Maria this week. Right. Beth says it looks so vintage. Thank you. I'll bring this I down. struggled a minute trying to paint the inside of this thing, oh, but you uh, paint feet too. Yep. I'll paint the feet later. Okay. So I'm loaded up on my rust patina here. And like I said, it doesn't look pretty. That's not a that's not a good look. Um, <laughs> Jenny says she's sorry. Jenny says she's from Kansas and she is a mermaid. See, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna go drier than that on this. I'm just gonna make sure that's centered. It's going to kind of hit the joints where rust would naturally kind of come up. I don't want it to, man, that's really, I might have to go really, really dry. That's more than I want. I'll have to come back and wipe that back. So I'm going to go from like all the little joints where the welds are. And it's going to look pretty fake, like craft store rust for a sec here, and then I'll fix it. Show you, show you the trick Oops, on my fix it. that I figured out yesterday. So bottoms of things have rust on them because rust runs down with water usually. Oh, Cindy's coming to get her spice rack she bought. Oh, nice. That was a good spice rack. A lot of people wanted it. So I'm glad you were quick on the, quick on the purchase. So far from our thrift challenge video, I'm winning. She is. But, I haven't sold anything yet. Well, so. we need to get your um, dresser into the shop. Yeah, so maybe not, I'll do not, that today. It's, it's the on the shop. website. My stuff isn't in the shop either. It's just online. Okay. That looks like a hodgepodge of weird rust marks. But <laughs> but it's going to get less weird here. It is going to get less weird. I'm going to go. I think I'm going to wash this other brush out because it's got less paint on it. I'm going to wash this one out and show you something cool here. At least I think it's cool. It is totally cool. I love it. I'm going to get brave and do some rust eventually, but not today. I felt like this was the perfect piece, though, because it is actual metal and it's pretty. So I thought that'd be good for the rest. All right. I didn't worry too much about getting this perfectly washed out. So this is wet. It's pretty wet still this brush and this hasn't quite cured remember i've got liquid patina in here and it's going to uh seal itself yeah so don't let it dry too much if you're wanting to blend it or smear it because once it dries you can't wet distress it you'll have to paint over the top of it or i got another spot that's... so what this wet brush is doing is it's just blending all that in so it doesn't look like i brush stroked it on there and I'm just hitting every spot that I went. And it's also picking up some of that um, some of that white swan and and the 
I can't think of my words this morning. Monet's Garden and White Swan well, mixture. We don't use Monet's Garden a lot, so you're not used to saying uh, it. My brain, you know, I'm, 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 I filled up the hard drive last night. And, uh, you know, I got to I got to make some space and move some things around. I feel like last night I might have lucked out picking that to be, to be the night that I took melatonin and Benadryl. Because Zeb was like, yeah, you can't, you can't take your dad like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, see you tomorrow. Oops, did I shift it? Okay. I think it looks good. But anyway, it's picking up some of the Monet's Garden and White Swan and kind of blending that in and not making that such a harsh, rusty looking color. I'm going to grab a little brush. Are you using this brush right now? Um, I use it to apply this, but you can use Are it. Are you done? Are you I, apply I, more? I've got another side I need to okay, use. I'm gonna, if you need to use no, it, No, it's okay. I was just going to brush. I was just going to paint the feet. So initially, if you guys saw that clock I showed at the beginning of the video where that was the experimentation piece, I sprayed this mm -hmm. while it was still this. wet and it ran down, but it ran too much off. And that's where I was like, you know what, let me, let me try using a little brush on this here. I thought I was going to do the cake batter, but then I realized this is just the bottom. So I'm just going to do the, the, the moody blue. So that way it, the top color this is a tiny little brush that it says it's a number one liner um i don't know what kit it came out of but now i'm going to just go in with some brighter uh more of that carnival red there and then i'm going to just hit some spots all right Bless if you're watching, I painted the bottom. Now, while these stencils are really getting dry, I'm going to paint the inside. We'll see. Words are hard, Linda says. Words are hard. And on this brighter, I'm just, I'm focusing on the lower parts. I feel like I'm finally over jet lag from England. Like that was a long trip, like a long time getting over jet lag. I think we might still try to make another trip to Europe this year because we have, we got this new credit card where we pay it off every month, but it gives us miles. And so between that and well, she, she, our, she our bothers mentioning paying it off because so far we've pretty much done everything with our business cash. We haven't had a credit card or anything. Yeah. We don't use it for credit. We just use it for the points. Yeah. But anyways, I think we might have enough points to get some tickets to go. Oh. Well, I've been using it at the Home Depot on everything I need for the church, so. Jenna says jet lag is hard. It is hard. Some people are better at it. I tried to do all the tricks that you hear, but I just haven't tried. I don't do, Zeb does a lot better without sleep than I do. Well, I got like three and a half solid hours. By then the kids, by about eight, the kids were up and the dogs were all over the place. They weren't bugging you though. No, but they weren't doing their morning chores and they were hearing about it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was trying to keep everybody contained. Struggle is real. I told this morning, I said, I forget how much we do as a team together. So when one of us is not around uh, in the morning or sleeping in because they were up at the ER in the middle of the night, it's funny how much I'm like, oh crap, I got to do this. Oh crap, I got to do that. Like taking care of all the animals, making breakfast making sure the kids get what they need. I had to run to Walmart because Eliza needed a tank top for her dance performance. She told me about it like two months ago and I just never got around to buying it. It's my bad for not being on top of it. And then I never go to Walmart. So while I was there, I was like, oh, and I need this and this and this. I'm not worried about 100% coverage because I'm going to distress this. All right. This is still pretty much dry, and I dried those other ones because I just want to soften. I don't want to, like, wipe out and really blend. So most mostly dry on this brush now. We do occasionally get paint on our countertop. This is a question we get asked all the time. After our live videos, I always pull up and scrub the countertop. It has oil wax on it, which kind of helps resist. And it is held up really well. Yeah. I tried to re-oil wax it when I we did that oil wax video the other day on um, when we were doing that challenge. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't accept it. It was still sealed up really well. Yeah, it's it's held up really well. So that does help. And also we don't mind a little authentic patina with time. 
I would say if you want a perfect countertop, oil wax probably isn't for you. But our goal is to ultimately have this be a really weathered, aged wood top. Because it's this island is made from wood from this house that dates back to 1917. And so we want it to look like it. So, so you could renovated. So on this, you could get real crazy and, you know, start adding like decrepit dust and, you know, little different variations of these tones here and just, you know, however creative you want to be. I'm not going to go super in depth with it, but I am going to dark wax it. He's not saying if you use decrepit dust that you're crazy. No, I'm just like, you could, <laughs> you could spend hours making this look like rust is what I'm saying. Yes, I agree. So I've just got the DIY clear wax here. I'm just going to throw a quick brush on so that my other wax doesn't get out of control when I start dark waxing it. And that's going to make these colors kind of deepen and, and make that rust color really pop out. So yesterday, we, if you haven't watched it yet, we did a quick little front porch makeover inspired by the fact that we really needed to get a tree planted before it gets too warm. And we planted a cherry tree. So I'm excited to see how that tree grows. We've been trying to plant more food. We're working on growing a huge garden for over at the church. We have all of our starts going because we, with just everything going on in the world, we want to make sure that we've got enough food for us, enough food to share. I think we're going to plant some fruit trees over at the church. We already have a pear tree, which I'm not sure what kind of shape that tree's in. It had pears on it last year. All right. So we're going to try to keep that. And it I needs have... some trimming. It's been kind of let go. It's, it's all wild looking, but other than the look, it still produces pears. We have two apple trees here. So I thought at the church, we might go with a couple of peach trees. So, and... so if this produces cherries in the next couple of years, after it's done being shocked, that tree, we just planted yesterday we'll have two apple trees a cherry tree a pear tree and if we can save it the walnut tree at the church it's starting to get i think it's got beetles in it the walnut tree yeah we've got to get it checked out by an arborist um but we're also going to maybe do some berries i need to do some research see if i can find some berries that aren't as pokey because i don't want to deal with pokiness i'm like they've got to have made a berry bush by now some sort of hybrid that doesn't have pokies so you can see i got back to some of that iron with the wax brush because it's really stiff if you're worried about that, let it cure more, let it sit, put more coats of paint on, because I only have one coat of each different color, and it's only been sitting here half an hour painted. I'm going to get the dark wax. Karen says that, uh, oh, Karen Radford, not Karen Mofford. That's who joined. Sorry, I totally said your name wrong. I have a cousin named Karen Mofford. Um, she says that her pear tree only bears fruit every other year. I think I heard that before. My parents had a pear tree at their last house. So I'm thinking we're also going to add some peach trees and some plum trees at the church because we have lots of land. I'm also a fan of apricots. If we're going to be planting trees, they may as well be fruit trees, you know. Right. Keep me busy all year long. Keep us busy. And then we can, <laughs> because the church, because we've got, it's going to be a store and we're going to have, um, we're going to have employees and stuff. There'll be plenty of people, I'm sure, that will help us eat the fruit. Okay. The pokies make the berries taste better, yes, but then I don't want to pick them, and so then I won't eat them. <laughs> oh, I missed an entire rung. Although, other than that, I'm pretty well done. This is super cute. All right, I'm going to heat gun this, and then I'm going to bring back that cake batter color. What time is it? Oh, we got 10 minutes. Yeah, you got, you got a few minutes here. Yeah, fruit trees are great to share with the community. There's actually a ton of community sharing. We live in an older part of town. And so in when things start giving fruit, we wind it or just vegetables like during harvest, we get bags of groceries. I left sometimes on our refer porch. to it as a zucchini crime. Yeah. When someone like gifts you a bag of like 20 zucchinis on your front porch. <laughs> yeah. And they don't tell you, they just show up. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in planting, we will have some videos coming up. We're not experts by any means, but I would, I would advise you to get creative and decide what are your favorite things to eat and try to grow them. There's lots of good information out there. And even if you're in an apartment, you can grow a container garden on a balcony and get quite a bit of food. You can feed 
one person with a four by four area. So even if you have a two by four, you could supplement your groceries. All right, I think I'm ready. I was gonna sit down, but then I realized you guys wouldn't really be able to see what I was waxing. Laura so. says, what do I mean by bringing color back? I'm gonna just stress this piece. So that way that yellow underneath comes back, Laura. I've got a, a light color called cake batter underneath and I want that to pull through. So just dark wax here and I'm gonna take some of this off like I've been doing all day. I'll just, I don't want it 100% full strength. And I'm just gonna kind of put it in some areas so that this doesn't look so fresh. And I haven't wet distressed this. This is mostly just what happened with the wax. The other wax is, the clear wax is probably still, I mean, I just put it on so it's not cured up yet. We're hoping that our bantam chickens start laying again, but we are, are the Americana chicks that we just got, they take a little bit longer to start laying, but once they start laying, they're pretty good little layers. And next spring, we might get even more chickens kind of pacing ourselves. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure by, I think when we got our Americanas last time in the spring, they were laying by like September. Yeah. Like all of them. We need a ton of eggs. I don't know. We will probably be able to eat all of the eggs that we get because we probably eat, I'm not kidding, five well, dozen eggs in a week and a half. Maybe. Yeah. Well, it's one of the main staples that your dad eats for protein to keep his sugar under control. Yeah. I make a lot of hot breakfast for my kids or I'll make, what I like to do is I'll make a bunch of, I actually did a video of it, but I'll make a bunch of breakfast burritos. I can make eight or 12 breakfast burritos and they're done by the end of the day. My kids and the cousins, my parents, Odelia brings friends home for lunch. Will the wax seal the metal or will you have to use an extra sealer? No, no it'll the seal wax it. will be enough. I mean, if you put this outdoors, it is going to wear, right? If you want to put it outdoors, don't wax. Use the, uh, I would use big the, top. the big top and the dark and decrepit instead of the dark wax because this is a liquid and this is the paste. And so. big top is not technically an outdoor sealer. so It will hold up there, way but. better than the wax. Our new paint is supposed to be an outdoor paint, but we're not going to advertise that because we have to. We got to test it out. So we're going to be trying out putting that new paint outside. Check out Blackberry Colovars. They, um, she planted them years ago. They spread out and they have no thorns. All right, I'll look that up. Thanks, Sharon. So my mom has, is in Alabama and she's got wild blackberries all over her property and she cans them she goes out and picks them and cans them up makes jams and various things well we put a, we're putting a fence right in the middle of the back area at the church because our chickens and our sheep are going to be over there and i want to plant a couple of fruit trees along the outside of the fence where the sheep can't get to it and then i want to plant berry bushes on the outside where the sheep can't get to it i mean if they eat it on their side that's fine but I don't really want something necessarily pokey. And I also want some berry bushes between us and the neighbors on the other side because they will help eat them. Okay, does that look rusty? <laughs> or does it just look like I painted it in maroon? This was a little harder than the clock because the clock had definite areas of surface where I could just kind of paint it on there and make it look like it was running and dripping, like this here. I feel like this worked out on that. I pretty much used the same colorations, the mermaid tails shining through, and I'll finish the back of this, but that's pretty, pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. If you really, really wanted to sell it as rust, you could get out like the making powders and add some texture, or you could also use some salt wash and put texture where you wanted it because because rust is not smooth it gets real rough it's basically uh eating away at the metal um so oh, it would, I did not it would be this. it would be rough and textured that would be a great application for salt wash with this coloration mixture we'll have to try um, that but there's a compare what we started out with bring you close so you can see all the tone variations in there Milk paint doesn't last so i'm trying to make sure i get good coverage because i've mixed <laughs> this color so i won't be able to make it up exactly and there's the faux rust um 
But yeah, if you've got anything with like rivets or or um, bolts or anything like that, it works great to give it just kind of a, like, so what I did is I just took the brush and really lightly um, wiped it down kind of in the shape of how a rust would run. And then I took that wet brush that was just, you know, no color on it and kind of muted it down on this clock. So this is where I was talking about bringing that yellow back. If the milk paint has chipped at all, which this is, a little bit chipping that cake batter will come through if the piece was shiny it would probably chip back to the original color but because this was pretty dull that cake batter just really isn't coming off of there which is great because i'm going to get a really good two-tone look and i will show this up to you guys up close and then i'll probably wind up clear waxing with some dark wax to really bring out the crackles i'm gonna get a I'm gonna come back and try to paper towel finish painting the inside here while we wrap things up. If you can't get enough off with the sandpaper, I'm using 220. You can also come around the edges, but be very careful because you might get too much chipping. You can wet distress the milk paint. Let me bring this up close. Yeah, show them. The heat gun did help some of this crackle, so keep that in mind for your own projects. Okay, there you go. But can you guys see the yellow peeking through there? I think it turned out pretty good. This is actually surprisingly so heavy. Your little tote looks good. And it doesn't look like an old, dated magazine rack anymore. It looks like a tote. Yeah. And you know what? Yes, you could put magazines in it. But my thought was if you had some skinny vases, I would use this for floral. So just to give you guys an idea of pricing, in case you guys are refinishers, this will probably be about $50 and Zeb's. Um, will probably be somewhere in the $40 to $50 as well. So keep that in mind when you're pricing your items. And if you're wanting to purchase these, give us about an hour. We'll get them finished <laughs> and listed. Oh, an hour or so. Yeah, give us about an hour. We'll get them listed at jamierayvintage.com, as well as if you've been waiting for more French canning jars. Those just came in from England. I met a source over there and had her send them to me, and I'll get those up on the website later today too. Um, and if you're wanting the paint products, we carry that on the website as well. So you can make over your own back porch junkie finds. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it out, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. Have a great Wednesday. Go make all the things look rusty. I would love to see your rust interpretation. Yeah, if you do any rusty projects, please um, put that in the Jamie Ray Vintage group on Facebook. And I'm just so starting to experiment. So if you've got any good ideas, I'm open to suggestions. Well, I know that um, Mary uses cinnamon. Oh, for texture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good. All right. Bye, guys.